Thanks for joining us today on this edition of Stock Show Confidential. I'm Terry Jordan. Today, we're in Midland, Texas at the Midland County Junior Livestock Show. Behind me, you see the horseshoe. Well, that's the name of the building. They call it the horseshoe here, and that is where all the activities are taking place. Now, these kids have spent a lot of time in preparation of getting ready to bring their animals here to the Junior Show. From here, they'll go on to some of the majors across the country, but for some, it'll be the end of the line. Now, a little later on, we're gonna take you to the sale of Champion, brought to you by one of our sponsors, Rogers Ford. You know, folks, each and every year here at Midland County Junior Livestock Show, it's always dedicated to uh, one of our outstanding volunteers and community members. I'm standing alongside of Wilson Heidelberg. Wilson, the show this year was dedicated to you. Tell me a little bit about what that means to you. Well, I'm humbled. Uh, I, I didn't expect it. I'm just blown away, but uh, I, I appreciate it and uh, I'm very honored. You know, you've been involved, so involved, not only from just being involved here at the Livestock Show, but throughout the community, tell me a little bit about your involvement. Well, I uh, started uh, showing at this county show uh, when I was eight years old, and I'm 63 now. I uh, came back to Midland as a school teacher and worked with the kids, and I've just uh, gone back to ranching uh, since I've retired from the school district, and uh, I just love the children. The, uh, the children are, are what it's all about for me, and uh, it's just, I want to see them have the brightest future they can have, and 4-H and FFA organizations are good uh, organizations for the youth. Well, you know, and not only just being involved for that length of time, but I know I'm also going to see you sitting right over here in just a moment in, in that auction circle. And as they bring those grand champion animals in each and every year, I know you have been a loyal supporter of that and bid in that auction each and every year. Yes, I, uh, I like to reward the children for their hard work. I really do. And, and I just, uh, when I had them in, as students and, and just uh, children of any age or any size, I just want to support uh, when they're doing something that is as great as this, I want to support that so we can maintain it. Wilson, congratulations on being this year's inductee. It's because of folks just like this, folks, that this stock show and all the stock shows throughout the United States are so important. So please get involved. The future of America depends on it. These youth depend on it. And the dividends that you will get from that will way outpay what you'll spend. Thank you, man. You know, friends in our industry, we always meet different individuals. This year we had the opportunity to meet a young lady where tragedy really turned to triumph, where a whole city comes together and backs her. Let's hear the story. Well, I'm standing here with one of our exhibitors from Midland County Junior Livestock Show. This is Ray Ann Knapp. And before the show started a couple of weeks back, she kind of had a little bit of hard luck. Uh, Ray Ann shows lambs, but there was something happened, Ray Ann. Tell me about that. Yes. Um, my neighbor's dogs got into their pen and tore one of them up. Uh, he tore one up pretty bad. He tore all the tendons out of his front leg and he couldn't walk at all and just was cuts and tears everywhere all over him. The other one, because I have two lambs, uh, the other one just got a big gash in his butt and you know we knew he'd be okay. He wouldn't get him fixed. The other one we weren't sure about. So that's what happened the Monday before county stock show. So. Well, I understand also that some folks were very kind to you and they did find you another animal so you were able to compete yeah. here. This is your senior year, right? Yes. Well, you know, some of those things happen like that and it's always unfortunate, but you were able to overcome that and you're going to make the sale tomorrow, obviously, yes. so that's a good thing. <laughs> but I also understand that uh, 
some people told me you're a very special young lady now. How many how many kids in your family? There's 11 kids. My gosh, <laughs> and you know, how does mom keep them all straight, you know? Um, well, I mean, most of them just kind of do what they need to do, and if they need rides, she gets them there, and she you know, Are you the only one that shows? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm the only one. Well, uh, I was told that you you really take this so personal because you don't want any help from your parents. You, you actually buy your own animals. Yes. You buy your own feed. Yes. And between making really good grades in school, between uh, working with that animal, you also hold down a full-time job. Yes. What, what are you doing? I work at Hollister. Um, it's just in the mall. It's just a clothing store. I work there when I can after school. Um, but other than that, when I find time, I work with my lambs. And I mean, I don't always have the money I need, but I make it work and I pay for everything that I can. You know, folks, when we talk about the future of America, this young lady standing next to me is an awful good example of that. And I wish you success tomorrow on sale day. Thank you. All right, thanks. <laughs> Doc Show Confidential is brought to you by the following sponsors. Sullivan Show Supply and Stock Show University. SureChamp. Showmaster Feeds. StockShowConfidential.com. Rogers Ford. And Paragon Bed Covers. Feed the bugs. When you feed your cows, a well-functioning rumen with a healthy population of good bacteria and fungi is the foundation of a profitable cow herd. So how do you unlock the potential of the rumen? With Amifirm. Amifirm is a natural feed additive that fortifies products like Vitafirm and SureChamp. Best of all, research shows it actually increases beneficial bug populations by 15%. Vitafirm, SureChamp, and Amifirm. This stuff is good. A lot of work goes into 4-H and FFA projects. Now one thing that people fail to recognize is the time that it takes to set up one of these local shows. Well, we're going to hear from two outstanding young people on what it takes to get ready for their local show. Hi, my name is Amanda. Hi, I'm Jade. I'm here with the Greenwood FFA. I'm with Lee FFA. To me, like this stock show in general, it's competitive. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to do their best. And um, I just really need to say I am from Greenwood FFA, or for Jay, like she's from Lee High. And it's just fun to represent your school the best way you can. So. I feel like maybe it's not so much competition with like Lee and Greenwood since we're two different cities, but like Midland High and Lehigh, they definitely have a really, really big competition and it's like, oh, you know, I'm going to try to beat so-and-so from Midland High more than it's like, oh, I'm going to beat so-and-so from Greenwood. But I mean, it's still a big competition and mostly everybody's here from themselves and not so much like they're, I mean, I know that sounds bad, but it's like not here for their like group or anything. They're here from themselves, so. Yeah, y'all want to win. Yeah. Yes, sir. For me, it's just, it's just being a part of the FFA and a part of Midland County. I, I don't mind being up here early and I'm sure Jay doesn't either, us working. It's it's something that we both love to do. We love Stock Show, we love everything it's about, we love everything it stands for and for us it's totally worth the work and the effort and being tired all the time. It's, it's a really rewarding thing to do. Yeah, that's basically the same thing. It's like, I guess FFA teaches you a really, really good work ethic. Mm -hmm. And it's more like, you know, this only happens once a year, so we try to like spend it with like our friends and stuff from around the, like from Greenwood and stuff. And I think it's just, I mean, it's it's fun. It's not like hard work. It's not like, I'd rather be doing this than like going to school or something like that. I mean, I think it's fun more than it is like working. I don't think of it as work. It's just, we gotta do it. It's just part of it. I definitely think that the things that we learn in the barn and we learn from our friends and from other adults that are teaching us and leading us in the showing aspect, I really think it will carry on in life a lot, just how you're supposed to have dedication and work ethic and um, you know time management. There's a lot of key aspects that come into showing and taking care of livestock and I really think all of that will apply later on in life. That's definitely one of the biggest things, like, I mean, me, I learned, like, money management, you know, you have to set aside, like, you can't just go to the mall and buy what you need because you have to buy this feed, you know, especially if you have a lot of animals, you have to know, like, you know, and you just have to know that you have to buy feed, it's not like you can just, like, lay it off and be like, you know, and I'm kind of the people, like, I don't like to rely on my parents a lot, you know, so I know that I have to do this, I can't get something right now because I need to get something else more important, you know, but it's, it's a lot of responsibility 
money management is probably like the key to it, I think, and responsibility, just knowing that what you have to do and what you have to get done in order to like to make yourself successful and stuff. Next comes up all the major stock shows that we get to go to. Um, me and Jane are both really fortunate. We get to go to most of the stock shows throughout the state of Texas, and it's it's also something that's just fun. You get to do it with your friends and your family, and you get to continue to compete and you know just. Earn, earn bragging rights. When you win, it's just a great feeling because you know that you earned it. You worked hard. You had your responsibility. You took care of your animals the right way. And um, after county, usually it's Fort Worth Stock Show, and we all really enjoy that show a lot. You can find a county agent around. There's a couple around, and there's a lot of ag teachers that are like love new people, and it's fun to get started younger because you have more time to get used to it, and you have more time for like competition and stuff, and you learn more as younger you have more people that'll help you since you're a littler but it's real easy just find somebody you know uh, a lot of kids are willing to help you out and get you to an ag teacher or uh, there's a lot of scholarships there's a lot to do that'll just get you started our young agricultural leaders need to feel that their hard work has paid off and with your help and donations we can bring in new and exciting young people into this industry be sure and check out StockShowConfidential.com. Now, if you have an interesting story, we'd like to hear about it. And also be sure and check out our Breeders' Corner. We have the top goat, pig, lamb, and steer breeders listed there. Check it out. You know, raising and competing show animals takes more than good nutrition. It takes determination, dedication, and hard work. Traits that are hallmarks to leaders. And that's why Showmaster is proud to feed the potential of the youth leaders through their educational programs, award programs, and support of the 4-H and FFA. Showmaster Feed continues to build the legacy of building champions through their innovative feed programs and nutritional research. Showmaster Feeds. Feed their potential. Welcome back to Stock Show Confidential. Now, when you travel to as many stock shows as we do, faces start to get familiar. Well, one young lady that we've had the opportunity to follow is the name of Savannah Kane. She resides in Greenwood, just outside of Midland, Texas. And here's a young lady that knows all about the livestock circuit. Hi, I'm Savannah Kane. I'm from Greenwood, Texas, and I support the Greenwood FFA. I show steers. I show a lot of different kinds of steers, but I have one in particular this year that I really like and he's a Charlotte and his name's Spider Pig. We're at the Horseshoe in Midland and I'm going to sell my steer, which after this I'm gonna to take to Denver on Monday and hope I do as well as I have done here. I hope that a lot of people watch me because, I mean, I try my hardest when I'm out in the ring, so I would hope people watch me. Showmanship is very important. It, it could determine if you win the show maybe, or if you do good in your class. You have to always know where the judge is and know if he like pulls you or asks you a question. You always need to know that. A few things that you probably should do is um, always keep your eye on the judge and keep his head up and always just make sure you have a hold of him in case he tries to get loose. But if he does keep, get loose, you need to keep calm. Whenever we go out of town, I enjoy like seeing new places. Like whenever we go to Denver, we've never been to Denver before, and I'm very excited for that to see what's down there and what's new. And when we went to Kansas City, it was very um, awesome because you got to spend time and you got to see other animals and see what they saw different from us in Texas to Kansas up there. And I'm always playing sports, so. Amanda and I find a time on, we work, walk on Wednesdays and Sundays and so we have time with our steers on those days and so we work with them a lot as much as we can and so, I mean if you can't afford it, you, I mean there's someone out there that probably can so if you get involved you just probably, they can help you. Scars, it's a disease that affects everything and everybody. Now if you've got scars, basically you've got diarrhea. Let's hear from Dr. Bo Brock out of La Mesa, Texas about Montezuma's Revenge.
Welcome to Stock Show Confidential. I'm Bo Brock in La Mesa, Texas, veterinarian over here, and thank you for joining us today. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about scours and show pigs. And um, scour is diarrhea, you know, that's what they call it. And we see that a lot in young pigs. So when you get your pig home, you just bought it, you get it back to the house, you're gonna mingle it with other pigs and they're gonna have contagious diseases such as bacteria and viruses and different things that can cause a pig to have diarrhea and it can be a big deal. It can stunt the growth of your pig and make it make it to where it doesn't go to the right show. As pigs get older, their digestive system changes. It changes from an animal that was supposed to be drinking milk strictly to an animal that's supposed to be an omnivore and, and eat solid food. And as that occurs, their, their intestine and the lining of it and the things that are inside of there migrate from young animal to an adult animal. I always tell people that when you're changing from one bag of food to another, always open the second bag before the first bag is empty and feed half and half for the first few feedings so that the intestinal tract can, uh, can adapt to it as time goes by. And probably the most common one that we'll talk about today is a bacteria that's called Treponema hyodysenteria, and that is swine dysentery. And that is a frustrating pig bacteria that gets in the intestine. It gets in the little villi that make up the lining of the intestine down at the bottom, starts growing and makes that villi break off. So the pig doesn't absorb its nutrients well, and if it gets to a high enough level, it can have diarrhea that just won't go away. We, we usually treat these pigs with Denigard or Lincoln Mix, put into their water at the recommended dose. So when you get diarrhea in your pig, most of the time it takes a long treatment program, somewhere around three weeks in order to clear it up. So most of the time I tell people, you need to deworm your pig when he has diarrhea with Panicure uh, or Atguard to get the whipworms. You need to make sure they have plenty of water and the water is medicated with a good antibiotic that will get treponema. You need to feed them oats and you need to feed them multiple times a day and talk to your veterinarian. From Brock Veterinary Clinic in La Mesa, Texas, I'm Dr. Bo Brock, and we thank you for joining us here on Stock Show Confidential. If you come up with any questions or have anything that you want to know, be sure and visit the website at stockshowconfidential.com. Thank you. Sullivan's Show Supply was established with the vision of producing more than just your ordinary show supply products. Whether it's fitting supplies you're looking for or the latest equipment, everything you need to make it into the winner's circle is right here. Don't just take it from me, take it from them. Sullivan Show Supply will be here before and after the sale. Well, we just finished up with the steer show here at Midland County Junior Livestock Show, and I'm standing next to Zach Blunt. He was our steer judge here today. Now, Zach, whenever you come to these shows like this, tell me why, what the passion is of why you come to these stock shows. Exactly. Well, originally, you know, growing up producing livestock and being involved in the industry from the standpoint of helping kids and feeding projects, Honestly, the passion for raising livestock and seeing good ones and looking through a really good set of livestock and uh, helping young kids get better and, and hopefully uh, them leaving with a little part of what you have to offer to the industry. Is there a particular time that you make your decision on a particular animal whenever he comes through that gate and has there ever been a time where that whenever you put one in there and in the very last moment you saw something that really popped on you and it changed your mind all of a sudden? Right. Most times, more times than not, you're going to see the top two or three individuals walk into a class of say five or ten. Um, and a lot of the times you know what's going to win the class as they walk in the ring from the standpoint of just structure, width. You can see the overall parts and pieces as they come in the arena. Also the confidence of that individual in terms of how they carry that calf or, or piece of livestock, whatever they may be bringing in the arena at that time. Uh, you know in their overall presentation, their readiness, you're going to sort down to two or three and then your personal preference alone is going to deduct that one that you're typically going to use. Tell, tell my viewers real quick, whenever, whenever you walk up to one of those calves and, and you actually analyze him, but whenever you put your hand on him, obviously this is a hair show, it's not a slick show and those are big, there's big differences there. But tell, tell my audience of, of what you're feeling whenever you're feeling of that hair coat. Are you feeling for quality, the depth of it, the thickness of it? Right. 
Well, when the animals walk in, obviously some of them are better haired than others. So there's a lot of stuff to see through in terms of the hair. And you can see a lot of natural width, but when you get up on those cattle, uh, obviously the highest cuts and the highest uh, price cuts come from the top side of their skeleton. So first of all, we're putting our hands on them to see how much natural shape, width, and mass they actually have behind their shoulder, over their rib cage, down through their loin. Then as we move our hands down just a little bit, we're actually not really feeling the hair, we're feeling through the hair to see how much condition they have, how smooth that condition is laid in there on them. So potentially you're gauging how much marbling and how much quality there is to that meat on the inside in terms of that calf being finished out correctly to be ready to kill. Because a lot of these cattle, even though they're 1250 to 1300 pounds, don't have enough internal condition, don't have enough uh, fat on them to really kill and have high quality meat uh, when we go to the rail with them. Well, obviously at all of these shows, and each one of them is different, and each judge is going to be a little different. So even some of these kids here that, that may have not placed up the top, they could go to another show and possibly win that sure. show. Sure. Yeah, and as I commented tonight, there's a lot of these cattle. Um, there's, we've gotten in this industry to the point where we're making them so wide and really deep bodied and so really crazy in their overall look. Um, you, you have different guys with different opinions and depending on where you come from in the industry, uh, I kind of try to wrap all, the, all those into one from producing cattle that go to market, show cattle, steers, heifers, put it all into one package and come away with a really complete animal. Other guys are looking for more extreme pieces. Well, if someone wanted to contact you, obviously you have a website. Yes, you want sir. to tell me about that? Yes, sir. We uh, we raise all all facets of livestock, uh, sheep, cattle, and hogs, and uh, our our website's bluntfarms.com. All right. Thanks for taking time to speak with us. As you can see, these local shows are the heartbeat of the industry. These 4-H and FFA members are serious about what they do, and it shows. Stay tuned next week as we take you to Denver, Colorado for the Denver National Western Livestock Show. And until then, here's hoping that we'll see you in the winter circle.